The German Mistel, an unmanned bomber crammed full of high explosives and a fighter strapped to the top to control the whole darn thing. It was a monster machine. This 148 scale kit is also a monster. See how I get on with it right here on Gary's Stuff. Hi there, I'm Gary. Welcome to my channel. Welcome back if you've been here before. Today, indeed, I am starting the build of the ICM 148 scale Mistel 1, essentially a BF 109 fighter on top of a Junkers 88 bomber. Now, I am so much to do on this that I'm going to do the BF 109 today, and the next video will be about the Junkers 88 and putting the whole thing together. OK, so if you don't want to miss that other video, best thing to do if you haven't done so yet, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell. You'll get a notification of all my future content as it's made available. And of course, if you like anything on my channel, please do give it the imperial thumbs up on the like button below because every like counts. And if you'd like to make a more concrete contribution to the channel, you can do that through Super Thanks by becoming a channel member or by using any of my online affiliate programs. This kit was very kindly sent to me for free by ICM as a review sample. However, they didn't also send along anything like a script or a list of suggested bullet points or any of that nonsense. They, like you, just want to see this kit made and assessed in an honest way. And that's what they and you are going to get. So we're going to make that BF109 first. Let's make a start on it. Okay, so we're starting with the seat for the pilot that sits up and on top of these look there's a little step at the bottom now it sits on top of that and there's the control column that goes in as well here and we'll put the rudder bar in as well And finally, there's this little box on the side here. I don't know if it's like a radio box or something like that. You know, you'll have to excuse my lack of knowledge of the anatomy of a BF-109 cockpit space. But anyway, that's um, the beginning of the cockpit put together now. So we put this piece in first and make sure it's up good and tight in that slot because we're going to need to put the cockpit floor in now. And as we've discussed, it's quite a difficult fit. There we go. If you do your dry fitting, it will go on. It go on well. If you haven't done your dry fitting, you can have problems, trust me. So there we go. It's on there then you can slot in the combing at the top here as well there's a little tab underneath it that should keep it at the right angle you see that little tab underneath should do anyway i've painted the instrument panel it's um, in dark gray and then i've just painted the dials in black and then sort of drawn in little bits of white here and there just to make them look like instruments. A couple of red bits, a couple of yellow bits and some white switches and things like that. The point is, I guess, that it's going to be inside a closed cockpit. It's there just to show a bit of illustration, a bit of sort of suggesting this is where instruments are without them having to be absolutely accurate. I think they're pretty close, but obviously they're not, not as good as the real thing. The instrument panel goes in with these two little tabs that align up with that combing piece. 
and it should sit pretty much vertically. Right, so next step is to make the engine. Now, the engine on this kit is really good. It's fine, it's, it's lovely, it's, it's well molded, it's easy to detail, it looks pretty good. To get it to fit inside the engine cowling once it's done accurately is very difficult. I found it, anyway. I found it really difficult. You have to make sure when you fit the engine to the aircraft um, using the mountings, you have to be absolutely spot on with them. Otherwise, the everything else just won't, won't fit properly. Um, the I think it's the super turbo supercharger inlet or whatever. I'm not sure exactly how that's supposed to go in, and if it doesn't go in just so. It's really difficult to put in the machine guns with their magazines. Um, and then that sort of impacts on putting the machine guns in place with the top fairing, top of the fairings, which is obviously where they, they sort of poke through. Um, also, if you are going to do an open, co uh, open engine, rather, do be aware that where the part for the cowling ends isn't where the engine cowling ends, it ends slightly higher. So you've got to cut up a little bit higher around where the um, exhausts are, fit the piece around the exhaust and then fit the other half of the cowling as up. This is all if you're gonna do this. Now, if you're not worried about the engine, if you're not gonna have an open engine, and I'm not on this plane because it's, you know, sort of, God knows how many meters up in the air on the ground, if you see what I mean. The best thing to do is not to worry about the engine at all, to build the cowlings, all of the cowling parts still, put those together and then put those onto the fuselage and it works. It works really well. You can feed bits of the gun barrels into the, um, into the gun ports if you want that's fine. You can build a bit of the engine and don't put all the ancillaries on it. Um, but again, you're still going to have to get it absolutely spot on. And it's really not that easy. I don't find it that easy at all. On the Junkers 88, as you'll see, piece of cake, not a problem. So just a fair warning, if you're going to make the engine, um, I would suggest making the engine only if you're going to do an open engined aircraft. Otherwise, don't bother. Just put all the cowlings on and take it from there. Anyway, if you are going to do the open engine, this is how you make the engine. We're going to make a start on the engine now. The two bottom halves of the engine is like the sump end if it, in a normal engine anyway, because these are inverted. But the crankcase, how about that? They go together. Um, there's no pins, so you've got to make sure they line up yourself. No alignment pins there. But there we go. Let's put them together a touch of extra thin to get them set up, and then we can let them dry. Then the oil the top of the uh, crankcase is here with the oil filler. It goes on top like that. There are two sort of cylinder banks. Each one goes together like this, so. And then just screw it up. Then for each cylinder bank, you have a rocker cover that goes on. Like so. Now, according to the instructions, um, you've got these little tabs at the end here and they fit into slots on there. There aren't any slots. So you've got to remove these tabs first and just hope that they sit roughly in the right place. It's a bit of an odd thing. Onto the engine and series at the back end. And they just go on. Now, you might be looking at these thinking, I'm not going to be having the engine on view. So why on earth am I doing this bit? Well, the reason is, 
this little post here connects with this little post here in the fuselage so you know that all goes together so these bits you need the, re the other three bits that you do at this point you don't need but this bit you have to put on because of that mounting po position there so it's a little um, cover it goes here Go okay, like that. Put a tiny little dab of glue on that to hold it in place. There, go. there is a bit that goes on the top over here. Allegedly. It's supposed to go on that one. Maybe that way around. Like what the instructions say, I think it goes on that top one. Because it's got like a semicircular, it's got like a tab to cut out to keep that straight so it fits on there it doesn't fit on there so there we go that's one for the instructions are wrong and this little peg goes on the back here again not critical unless you're having the engine on show i would say And these three pegs here line up with the hole, if you like, on the back there. There we go. At the front end, there's the gearbox for the propeller. It goes in here, like so, and it just sort of goes together like that. Then when it's ready, it goes onto the front of the engine like so. And finally, for the moment, the supercharger goes on here. Now that's everything I'm doing to the engine for the moment. There are exhaust stubs and other bits and pieces, but this block gets painted black. So I'm going to paint that black, do a bit of brushing, maybe pick out some of these um, feed lines and whatever and then I'll do the rest of the engine parts I'm going to dry brush this engine with some steel I think it is just to bring out some of those edges some of the highlights um, really don't want to be too much because these are pr probably quite new engines and not knackered engines because this plane's got to get back and fight another day. So just put a bit of dry brushing on, pick out some of those edges. It'll look better once if you're going to have the um, hood open, which we are with this one, then uh, it will look better as well. I'll just cut off the um, exhaust with a supporting frame. Uh, off the main frame just for a while so I can put on the flame guards on either side first. Two, three. One slight thing to note is that this part number is wrong. That should be C31 because C29 is the wrong um, stack, exhaust stack. It's C31. Let's go with C30. I've okay. uh, painted the exhaust stacks in burnt iron. The flame cover in black, and it goes on the side of the engine, just there. Yep. And there's one on the other side as well. And there's these bits that go on the side, apparently, painting interior grey first. I don't know if that's right or not, but. 
There we go, they're going on. The engine mountings can go on as well. They go on these two pegs here. Like so. And then the cockpit can connect to the engine and there's a sort of peg and a hole here and then there are these two holes up here for the engine mounts just forget what we're dropping for a minute set it off there this engine mount's gone there and then that peg slips in the bottom there There we go, like that. And then there's this support arm that goes in here. So the nose guns go onto these, I guess they're magazines. They look like magazines. Like so. Take that. Look at that. That makes more sense. Like that. And the last thing to go in into the engine bay or the nose bay, I guess, are the guns. These fit just in like this. Right, so that's that. So let's now paint the inside of the cockpit and then we can put the two cockpit halves together. And then the two halves can go together and we'll... There aren't any pins to have ready to locate them, so just locate them as you can. Um, then um, tape them up. That's what I was looking for. Tape them up. There's a huge ridge of a seam here. That's going to have to go this one. Um, but tape it up for the moment, let it uh, set, and then we'll go about sorting out everything else. Right, so the thing we have to do now is we need a couple of holes drilled here for the um, supports because this is the Mistel aircraft. Um, we are provided with a diagram. Um, whether we can actually measure 15.1 millimeters to that accuracy, 11, I'm going to make it 15 mil and 12 mil. Any inaccuracy will be taken up by things like the plastic. So it's 15 millimeters from this front end, which makes it about there. Draw a line roughly across there. And then it's oh, 11.9 millimeters, so 12 millimeters from the center. I'm just extend this um, this piece here is on the center line, so we just extend that down to that, and then 12 millimeters either side of that. So put that at 10. So it's 12 there. 10, that's 12 there, that's 7 actually, there we go, so we are just inside these, these markings here, so that's where we're going to put them, and they're 1.2 millimeter drill holes, so there we go, 1.2 millimeter hole, in the right spot. And let's say achieving a 0.1 millimeter accuracy. So a twelfth of the dimension of that hole accuracy isn't going to happen. So that's going to be close enough. The base of the wing, the bottom half of the wing, 
slots into the underside of the fuselage like that. And then there's a couple of uh, tabs at the front here that meet up with it to complete the bond. Okay, so I'm now going to glue the front end of the engine cowling together first. This is the bit that goes over the propeller shaft right at the very front. So we'll glue that first. The front of the radiator element goes into the this is actually the underside of the top of the radiator housing. I'll show you what I mean a bit later. Let's put a bit of glue into that. So then this piece goes into the radiator housing itself. So Right, so I've got the front pieces and the two top pieces in. I'm now going to put in the exhausts from the engine. They can sit like that. Then the radiator can go on top of those. So with the exhausts in place and the radiator in place, all we need to do is just then join this engine cover to the front of the aircraft like so. The wingtips also slot in like so. And you'll notice this one has a pitot tube in it. The Air intake for the carb goes on here. Uh, we'll probably put a, uh, a dab of glue on here first, then put the air intake on because it won't go on otherwise. The carburetor air intake goes on just here. To the upper part of the radiator flap. It goes in here. It's, they say to do it all in one piece and slot it in. I find it easy to do it this way around. Now, on the instructions, you can see here it says that uh, there's a radiator element to fit on the front of here, and that's empty. But you can see this is actually filled in. It's quite a substantial molding. It's not flash. So. I guess if you want that, then you have to trim all this off completely or just paint that in um, burnt iron or metal or something. Then when you're ready, slot the lower half of the radiator cowl flap in like so. Then the training edge flap can just go into place here. On the leading edge of the wing outboard here is a slat. And it's really important to remember that this is like a spring-loaded device on the real plane. And if you have the aircraft parked or, you know, or um, in a very tight turn, then these slats will be deployed because the idea was that they would deploy automatically at lower speeds. They would pop out. Um, or at uh, a high combat maneuvering, whereas normally the airflow would push those back into place. So if you're showing it sort of cruising along or chattering along at full speed in a straight line, then those can be retracted. If they're turning hard or on the ground, parked on the ground even, these will be deployed. The rudder just sits easily enough on the end of the fin like so. One, two, three, and the tailplanes, horizontal stabilizers, if you will, just slot into the sides. Okay, I'm going to fit the, uh, the gun sight now into here. 
Let that dry paint the base of that black. Then I shall put the the windows on, but I will mask them first before they go on. Okay, when the, uh, the masks are done, I can start putting the canopy in. I'm doing all the joints with uh, the Crystal Magic, AK Crystal Magic. I find works very, very well. It's essentially a clear PVA. It does dry very, very clean and very, very clear, which is excellent. Okay, last piece goes in. It sort of fits really nicely, actually. That's do you know what? Normally, transparency is the worst thing, but this is probably the best fitting transparency set I've had for a while. And it's on the thing where I've got so much stuff to do at the front. It's kind of ironic, really. But anyway, I'll leave that to set because this is a PVA and it needs to set for a long time. I may even leave that overnight to set up. There's also this supplementary armor plate window. It goes in front of the windshield. Um, I'm going to paint that separately. So I'll spray the one on the aircraft first, spray this one the same color, and then I can put it on top when it's ready, when it's finished. The undercarriage legs can go in now. Can actually only go in one way, which is really useful. And it helps set the angle very cleanly. And the wheel can go onto the hub as well. Then the doors can go on as well. They, there's a little tab which sort of engages with the leg. So, and then a little, so there's a tab in here which engages with the leg itself and then there's a little sort of cuff that sits on right there and at the back of the aircraft the tailwheel can go and don't put it in the hole that you've drilled for the support for the mistel it goes into the back up here like so the propeller sits on this sort of sculpted back plate, if you like. Sits on it very, very well. Then you just slip the spinner over the top. And the whole of the propeller assembly can go onto the front of the plane. And our BF-109 is finished. There it is then, the BF-109F fighter, part of the Mistel-1 flying bomb combination. It's quite a bit of kit to make. Um, it is a 2006 mould originally, and I think they designed things very differently in 2006 to how they do now. It's what, 17 years ago. Um, it's quite a tricky kit to put together at times and there's things like you know the engine is beautiful if you want to make the engine that's superb i don't know that you'd necessarily want to do it on a mistel with the plane on top because they'd need quite a lot of very long ladders to get there i think they'd pretty much sort out the maintenance on the ground first then put it on the the yunkers but the yunkers obviously you can do with the engine as we'll see in the next video um so if you're not going to put the engine in, it's actually a lot easier just to put the cowlings on and the exhaust stubs and things like that, and just not bother with the internal engine at all. Unless you're really, really good at accurately modelling, in which case, by all means, do it if, if you want to. Um, it's up to you. ICM do say their kits are not made for beginners, and I would absolutely go along with it, certainly in the case of the 109. There's a lot to do. There's a lot of accurate making needed. But once you do, once you get it right, it looks beautiful. Um, I, it, it looks really smart sat up there on top. 
very very happy with it. the decals are gorgeous that they're producing these days couldn't really say much more about it than that it's a really really good kit so far to build so the next video is going to be all about the Junkers 88 bomb underneath it and how we put that together that's a very very much newer tooling from ICM if you want to see how we get on with that please do remember subscribe to the channel hit the bell and you'll be notified when that video is made available and of course anything you like on my channel please do give it the imperial thumbs up on the like button below because every like counts thank you so very much for watching hope to catch you again very soon take good care now and goodbye